Hi everyone, I'm coming on to do a card and I actually done this yesterday and I've had a lot of positive feedback on it so I thought I would come on and do a tutorial on it. There will be a few changes in it because I made a few errors but this is the card that we are going to be doing because originally what I did was I only put the seaweed here and I left this part blank but when I put my mermaid on it didn't look right so what I did was I stamped over this which was wrong so a lot of that is kind of hand drawn so today I will be doing that first before I put on the top layer but you can see there's a lot of shimmer in her um, and it's just it's really pretty um, and I think any wee girl would love that as a birthday card I think it is just really really pretty now there is a paper called just just colour in I think it's called I find it Just add colour it's called and it's got the C. Now you could more than anything add that in in front there and it would look absolutely fine. Okay you could easily do that and that was my intention last night I was thinking about colouring this and using that as my background but I'm not I'm just going to keep it simple. So I'll just add that back over there. So this is the stamp set and it's called Magical Mermaid. I will be using this here, which is just splodges really, splatter. I am using the mermaid, which I have previously cut out and stamped. Now there isn't a die for this, I just fussy cut it, but it's pretty simple the hardest part is around the hair if that will just focus maybe come on focus there you go that's the most difficult part the rest of it is all flat lines so if you can persevere with the hair you are on a winner and then i'm using the seaweed so it is super simple. You could use the seabed if you wanted. That's just like your sand and your shells. But I'm not using that. Um, and we're using this sentiment here that says have a magical birthday. So let's crack on. I have cut my card bases. Now, in fact, have I? No, I haven't scored my base. So, I to pull up the scoreboard to score that. Yep, that's fine. So, I am scoring at 10.5 centimetres, which is 4 and 1 eighth, I believe. I just work in centimetres because it's just what I have been working in and I find it easier at the minute. I need to learn to start converting it. Now I have said it before in a previous video, the cardstock I'm using at the moment, I think my supplier is using a different card because it keeps cracking. But I'm going to persevere with it, it's, it's still a decent quality card. Um, it is a 300 GSM, but I don't like the crack, so I will be changing supplier when this um, batch runs out. So, I have got one layer cut down at, um, let me think, that's 14 point six by 
10.3 and this one is 10 by 14.3 centimetres. Okay, and it's just so there's a tiny border. All right. Now, I'm not wasting all that cardstock. And I didn't waste it on this one either. I actually only have a thin border around it. So I am going to cut some of this out. Um, and I'll just be using my X-Acto knife and a ruler. So what I'm going to do is just line that up and cut through. And I'm turning it. Let me just see where that's cut to. Bring that down just another wee bit, I think. Bring it down a bit there. There we go. I'm just lining that up. Get my wee notch in. And just be careful your knife doesn't slip. <laughs> Line that up again because this will do for another mat layer for another card, or you could use it for cutting out labels, whatever. Just don't waste your cardstock. That's my top tip because it's too expensive to waste. Right, so I'm going to come across here like that. Right. And now you can see I just need to trim a few wee bits out. So where's my scissors? They're here. So I'm just notch near. Notch there. And notch there. Okay. And then you've got a still a good sized card that you can easily work with. And when your layer goes on, no one is going to notice that that bit underneath isn't there. But you have saved so much card. All right, so let's get over for today. Right, so let's get stamping, right? So we'll move that aside. We don't need that right now. Oh. Seven and nearly eight minutes and I've done nothing barely. Right, so for background we are using pool party for the splodges. And I had put this on block D. Okay, so I'm just randomly splodging this on. Make sure you cover your whole area. There we go. So that's that part done. Um, where's my stamping scrub? That's here. Pull that in. Put white. And I'll just place it aside so that it dries. Right, so we're finished with that. Oops. I'm a bit all fingers and thumbs today, so please excuse me. I just didn't sleep very well last night. Now we have got Tranquil Tide, which I'm using for my seaweed. Now you can change this up. You could use two different tones. I'm just keeping it really simple. So I have put this on block H, which is the long thin one. Okay, so I'm just inking it up. There we go. 
and just bring it down like that. And I'm just slightly overlapping so that this part is coming into the next bit. But I am going to also vary my layers because I want different heights. Okay. And I'm also, let me just grab a bit of scrap paper. I'm also going to bring it in from here. But I will be adding the base part on. Okay. So you can see that part's missed there. If I bring that up closer. But I will add that in with um, the markers. Okay. I'll just bring that one in about there, I think. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to clean up my desk. Now you could easily um, use an uh, aqua painter and your ink pad if you don't have your markers. That would be absolutely fine. But I do have the marshals, so I'll be using them for colouring. Um, I'll just clean my block off. Oops. Let me so I actually need to clean my block, uh, my stamp scrub. Right, so that while I'm here, I will also chop down my sentiment so try and go tied again I should have done that when I had my ink pad open Oops. never fails always end up inky never mind so I'm just putting this in the corner Perfect. And again, give it a wee scrub, clean it up. Right. Clean the ink off my finger. Never fails me. I guess through alcohol, rubbing alcohol like nobody's business and it's to clean ink off me. Right, put that aside because I don't need that right now. Right, I have got my Tranquil Tide marker. Okay. Come on, you focus. There you go, Tranquil Tide. And I am going to use the fine tip and that's just to fill in these little parts here, okay? So I'm just bringing it down into the plant area. And you don't need to be dead precise, just a random will be fine. Right. Then over here, we just need to add in another little bit of sketching. And you end up with that. But when you have coloured that, no one will see that you have overstamped that, really. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So I am going to use my brush in and just start colouring in. So I'm just lightly, and I'm not being overly fussy, I am just going along the lines and just thickening them up really.
and if you do want to be precise feel free to use the narrow end of the marker but to be honest I'm not fussed I just want a wee bit of colour on the background okay And I'm just going to come along here and actually just use the side of my marker and just actually colour in the base. But just add a bit of variation in it. Okay. And that just means that the base of that is covered. Right, so here I am bringing this one down. So this is quite a long video because there is quite a bit of colouring needing done. And I am not the fastest colourer. So feel free to hit the fast forward button and skip to when I am using the techniques. Okay, I won't be offended in the slightest. All right. I'm going to bring that down here. And some of this I'm freehanding. If I think that something needs to be a bit thicker, I'm thickening it up. If I think that something needs to be somewhere else, I'm just adding what I think. And then just and sorry I don't know if I mentioned it the cardstock for the background is tranquil tide as well just in case I forgot to mention that right so now all I need to do is add in a wee bit of greenery on these leaves um, which I think let me just see Yeah, I'm just going to stick with the same colour. So I'm just adding wee dashes really. I'm not worrying about staying inside the lines and all that nonsense. Because when you put your rails over this, some of this isn't even going to be seen. Okay, so I'm not getting overly technical with it. In fact, my sight's starting to go a bit blurry. Which is overtiredness because I didn't sleep great last night. Jaden's annoying Max, which is nothing new. He's a pain. He's normally at my mum's today, but tomorrow's Father's Day and they are going out for a meal. And my dad's car only has um, four seatbelts, so they can't take Jaden tomorrow. Um, because my sister and her daughter live with my parents. So, Jaden's not getting over tonight. Um, we were invited out with them, but my nerves at the minute aren't great. Um, and a crowded Father's Day restaurant is not the best idea for me at the minute. 
Um, it's just not a good idea. Um, I had a bit of a bad night last night with panic attacks, so I am not going to tempt fate and push it. I'm filming, Jaden. What's wrong? Okay. Which means it was absolute rubbish, whatever he was going to tell me. So as I said, you can see I'm not the fussiest of colours. But the idea is enough to trick the eye that everything's perfect. And that's all we're looking for with crafts and art is trick the eye. The eye believes that everything looks perfect from a distance, obviously. Which, if you see that, you wouldn't know that that was scribbled together. But if I show you it close up, you can see there are errors. But it's fine for what I'm doing. So, next part is we are going to... Oh, we need to colour our mermaid, that's what we need to do. So, mermaid. Let me bring in a bit of scrap paper again. And her hair, I am using Soft Sky first. Whoops. And I'm just colouring over it all with Soft Sky. Okay. Apart from our wee braid part, our braid, I will be adding... A darker colour to that. Okay, so I'm just coming down here. In the hair ends, I am being quite generous with the ink because where I've fussy cut it, there is wee white edges and that doesn't look pretty. I am going to come in with highlights in Marina Mist. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use the marker, uh, the bullet end. And just come in. And basically I am going over the darker lines. And also coming in just to add... That wee bit of a darker shade. Okay. And this will blend in beautifully, I promise. Because it's the exact same colours I used in my sample. Just going to come in here. See if he wants down that way. So I am going to add just a wee bit more of the mist into this part. There we are. And I'm adding Bermuda Bay. Just to the braid area, okay. And I'm going to use the bullet end again because it is quite a narrow area. There we go. Right for her tail, I'm going in with covering it completely with lemon lime twist, okay. So I'm using the brush end and I am coming down the whole way 
into the tail with a lemon lime twist. Okay, and then I'm just going to come around here, make sure that I've got that part right. Don't want her arm going green. There we go. Got that. Okay. So that's the first layer of a tail done. Then I'm going to come in with the Bermuda Bay again. Only this time I'm coming in with the brush marker. And I am going to start up at the top and just come in to about, let me see, about here. So I'm just going to colour each little scale coming down on the diagonal to that. And then I'll do the same coming up the way. Let me just see, yep. There we go. Turn that again. And as I said, this will be a longer video because there is quite a bit of colouring in it. And I do take my time. Right, so we've got that part done. I am going to come down here and just add a wee bit. Let me just see. Just come down on your tail. Like that. And then I am going to just edge round about it. Okay. So I'm just coming round the edges. With the colour. So that, that looks nicer. So I'm going to just bring it up to this first line. As I said I change my mind as I go along. And I'm going to do the same with that part. Yeah, I like that. Just thicken that up until it meets that second line there. The same with that side. There we go. So that is our mermaid coloured. Now our body I have left white just now. I am going to go in with... Now I think I used pink grey on the last one. But I am going to try um, crumb cake this time. In fact, I'll try Sahara Sand. She has a mermaid, so she doesn't need to be the same colour as normal people. They live under the sea. So, Sahara Sand. Let me just see. Yeah, that will do fine. And it's almost a, a greeny grey colour, the Sahara sand. As I said, my sight's starting to wither a bit now. Right. Get the markers out of the way because we don't need them now. Right. And once that's dry, that will lighten anyway. Right, bring back in our bits. So this is going to come on here. And I want my mermaid to be kind of weaved in amongst the waves. Right, so I'm going to bring that there, I think. And I've got the base part there. 
So I think I might use that. Let me just see. No, I'm not. Bring that down there like that. Right, so I am going to add some wet glue where I'm going to put it. Where did I put your wet glue? Oh, it's in here. Right. So, wet glue. And I'm just going to turn this over and do it all in one, hopefully. Oops, I've got hair. Don't want that. Right, so that. That. Me put on my mermaid. Tail. Right. So let me see where I'm positioning this. I want that end down quite low. And then position her. About there, I think. Okay. Fine. So what I'm going to do here is just take my scissors and chop off these edge parts. Okay, turn that round, do the same at that side. Oops, hold on. There we go. It's because there's a bit of wet glue on it. It's Went a bit soft. Right. Oops. Now we've got this bit down here that's bare. So I think I'm going to add another wee bit down there. Oops, that needs to be down a wee bit lower. I want that on the corner almost. That's fine. Right, so let me see if I bring that in there, across to meet there, so we'll do that. Just adds another wee bit of sparkle. There so I'm just going to position that up to the corner, bring it into there, and then... I am just going to come in at that angle there and that can get tucked under there like that. Too straight. I do want a wee bit of a curve on it. That's a bit better. So it looks more of a weave than a dead end. And I want this bit here. Let me just see. I think I'll have one end of that just coming in. So I'm just going to add a wee bit here. 
over the top. And if you are gluing anything over glitter paper, make sure that it is a wet glue because your dry glues very, very rarely stick. Okay, and I'm actually going to overlap that over the top of her tail as if that's another weave coming in. Okay, and your glue, this glue dries clear, so I'm not worried. Okay, whoops, slipped a wee bit there. I want that on top of your tail. Come on, that's it there. I'll just snip that wee extra bit off like that. There we are. Right. So next up we need the sentiment, okay? So I can push that aside just now. Bring back in the sentiment that I stamped. Um, my small guillotine. And I'm cutting quite close up to the text because I don't want loads and loads of space round about it. Yep. Let me see. Move it up a wee bit. That. Turn. And I'm just shaving a wee bit off that side as well. There we go. Then I have got a piece of Tranquil Tide that I've cut out with the now retired decorative label punch. But the um, I did try it with a pretty label punch, but my sentiment wouldn't have fit on matted on another layer. So that's why I'm using this one. Um, the shape of it suited this better. Okay, so I'm just centering that as best I can. Okay. Sign. Then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Oops. Fingers and thumbs, as I said. My hands are actually numb. I can't feel them at the minute. Right, I need some more dimensionals. Oops, that's the mini one. Just don't want them out there now. That's the larger ones. Mini ones are great for small items. But... For this, I need the larger ones, and I'll just use a wee half one for the corner there. Just down there. Right, so take back and off of them, and position that up there. Right. Now the top of my mermaid isn't stuck down yet. So I'm going to stick her down now and I'm just going in with some wet glue. Okay. Like so. Perfect. Then we've got our beloved one Castella and I am going to shimmer up my little mermaid. Okay. And I'm going all over. So I'm just, let me just get this moving a bit because it's a bit dry today. There we go. Oh, that was just a bit too much. But we will move that about. She's going to have golden hair instead of blue. Hey ho! Right, 
I'm actually going to go for that with my other one Castella, which is a refill one. So there's more water in this one than um, shimmer and lift some of that and move it, okay, because it's a bit on the heavy side. So this is more or less now just like an aqua painter. Okay, so you can see it's kind of blending in the colour a bit and diluting it. But that's fine. And I'll bring that back over and just brush off some of that colour because I don't want it to be as shimmery as it is. Up. There we go. And for her little braid, I am going in with a little bit of crystal stickles, and that's just to lift that colour right up. Okay, what's the daisy? I'm just coming in here and I'm just dotting on the stickles to her braid. Yeah, that's fine. As I said, there are errors where that shimmers went right over onto the the card that will focus you can see it on the seaweed just at the side of her hair and there's also a wee bit down there but I think that's quite pretty and as I said I think any wee girl would love that if you are worried about that wait till it dries and then go back in with your marker okay so let's get it matted and layered now. Oops. Get a wee bit of ink there. So I'm just going to go around the sides with some wet glue. You could use your tear tape, your uh, Tombow, you could use your Fast Fuse. Because it's card to card, you need the first few rather than your snail. So I'm just bringing that down to the base of that. And then pressing it on around the sides. Okay. Then I've got my card base that's scored. And that's coming on there. Now for a wee second, this is a bit larger than I would have liked. So I'm literally just going to cut a wee tiny smidge off the top of it. So let me just see. That should do it. As I said, it was just a bit larger than what I wanted. Yeah, that's better. Happy with that. Okay. So again, going in with my wet glue. Going to go round my base card. And I'm doing this for quickness. Normally I do use tear tape. Right, and then just position it on. Like that. Okay. And that's our card done. And I think you will agree that it is quite a 
special card. Okay, and as I said, that one's got a hint of sparkle on it. This one has went sparkle overload. But what I will do is I will go back in and just colour over them when that sparkle has dried. Just to dye it down a wee bit. I will use mink pad and an aqua painter just so that it doesn't um, mess up my markers because the wink of Stella would stick to my marker. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Sorry it was a long video but I would rather take the time and walk through it step by step so you know what you're doing um, than just edit and cut parts out so you can see what's happening. Alright, so thanks for watching, thank you for subscribing and I will be back soon with another tutorial for you. Bye for now.